Welcome to the Why Not Podcast with me, Chrissy Hawkins. In a world where everybody asks you why, I'm here to ask why not. So sit back and relax or walk and listen and join me on this journey as we try to answer this never-ending question. What makes people say why not? Hi guys, welcome back to Why Not. So today I have an absolute powerhouse with me to interview so she is heading up two businesses as well as being a mom to two kids under two so absolutely amazing all the things that this woman is doing so I hope you enjoy my interview today with Sarah Albert. Hi guys welcome back to Why Not. Today I have a very interesting guest with me. I have Sarah Elbert. So she is the one of the co-founders of Equitas and she's also COO of Envious Dress Hire. So also as well, mother of two. Welcome to the podcast, Sarah. How are you? Thank you very much for having me, Chrissy. Delighted to be here. Thank you for coming on. So first off, would you just like to introduce yourself to everyone here? So I am Sarah Elbert or My married name is McDermott, in case anyone else sees me on Facebook and can't put two and two together. Um, I am the co-founder of Equitas, and I also have another side business with one of my best friends in Envious Dress Hire. Um, I'm also mum of two little girls. And yeah, the probably where it all came from is the horses, isn't it? Um, So I'm a qualified HSI level two coach. Um, and I'm an event writer at heart, although the last few years I have mostly been competing in dressage due to a little bit of lack of horsepower, lack of time, <laughs> all yeah. of the above. So um, that's what I have found myself doing lately. And while it might be quiet on the horsey front at the moment uh, because of the girls and trying to juggle it all, um, it is very busy with Equitas and it's very busy with Envious. So. For anyone who doesn't know what Equitas is, by the way, you should if you don't, um, <laughs> can you explain it to people a little bit? So Equitas is a digital media um, company platform uh, specifically for the women of the equine industry. Um, we get asked all of the time, why is it necessary? We aim to educate motivate and inspire the women of the industry and they make up over 72 percent the main reason why there's a need for equitas is that mainstream media and other media companies typically cover the top 10 percent you know who's winning who's doing well um, and they tend to get the media coverage and the reality of it is is that the majority of the industry are made up of of women but the roles that they take on tend to be either in the background with the organizing, um, looking after the horses day to day, perhaps being grooms. Um, and also then you have the majority of the grassroots and amateur um, demographic are predominantly women. So these women are not getting represented in mainstream media and um, enter Equitas. <laughs> uh, it's really, really important. We want to give them a voice. We want to give them a platform. Um, and as I said, we want to educate, motivate and inspire them. Learn from each other, support each other is one of our main, main things. Um, and then on the other side of it too, as well as creating the community side and having that feeling of, of um, as I said, that community and, and togetherness, we want to bring forth equity. That is essentially what Equitas stands for, is is equity within the industry and proportional fairness. We are looking for more than equality and that can be hard for some people to grasp. Um, And a lot of people, sorry, I don't even mean just some people to grasp, a lot of people to grasp because it's it's very hard to understand equity unless you don't have it. Um, And it's, it's trying to educate those in what it means and what it stands for and the proportional fairness that it represents. So it is very important that we, along with the community, we use that platform and create positive change for the generations coming forward um, and gain equity within the industry. It's interesting to say a lot of people don't understand because I would say I was one of one of those who didn't really understand the difference. But could you explain the difference between equity and equality? 
So equality is giving everybody um, equal opportunity. So whether it be equal pay, equal you know opportunity to to progress, um, and you're giving, you're opening the same doors essentially for everybody. Um, the problem with that is is that not everybody is starting from the same place. So there's a great visual actually that's going that you can find online if you Google equity versus equality, and it has the three people trying to look over the wall, the same wall, trying to see the same thing, um, and they're given the same opportunity to do that, but it doesn't work for everybody. So if one person is taller, they can see over the wall. If the next person is not so tall, they can't. And then there's one person obviously that cannot, there's nowhere near seeing over the wall. Um, But if you, the person who's tall enough doesn't get the box, the person who is medium sized gets one box and the person who is small gets two boxes. Everybody gets a chance to see over the wall and look at the same thing. And that's probably the best visual that there is out there for it. But it, it does come down to proportional fairness and the acknowledgement that not everybody is starting from the same place. Specifically for women, it comes down to the specific need that we have as women and the importance that it that we need for that to be recognized in order to, especially in the sporting world, to be um to not only be recognized but to be given the the tools and the 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 facilities that we need and where equity comes in is it provides us it then gives us a, a level playing field and the great thing about the equity industry is that yes we are given the opportunity to um compete against men in the same same arena but we are not the same as men and that is the the founding truth while we want the opportunity to compete against them and we are um driven by that a lot of the time there is definitely the over the the overarching kind of feeling of aren't we lucky that we get to compete against them okay and that's not how it should be. We shouldn't be grateful to be able to compete against them. We deserve to compete against them. It is, but to be competing against them fairly, there are things that we require and that's where equity comes in. Yeah, I understand what you're saying there. It's interesting you saying that, that we're lucky to compete against men. I always just thought of it as a men and women compete in that sport because I suppose your physiology doesn't necessarily mean you can control a horse better. Yeah, I I agree to an extent, but we have to acknowledge the differences in the physiology, hmm. you know, and the menstrual cycles and, you know, the different kind of um, even physically like women with breasts, like, you know, when they when they don't okay, wear, like we have to consider what sports bras we wear. Yeah. You know, men don't. Now, the same could be said, men have to consider what cups they wear or if they do. You know what I mean? So, you know, they have considerations that we don't have, but it's about acknowledging those differences. And it's not about being given an advantage or being at a disadvantage or anything like that. It's about acknowledging them and basically just giving people what they need to compete to the best of their abilities. And, you know, we've had the recently the Why Can't We campaign. Um, taking inspiration from other sports like rugby and soccer and tennis and even most recently the British Dressage and, and the British Riding Club especially who kind of kick-started it all in the UK um, with allowing women to wear dark coloured jumpers, allowing everyone to wear dark coloured jumpers for competition um, and the feedback from that was really and still is because it's still ongoing on Facebook groups and stuff like that online but it's the feedback from that is really it's really powerful and while not everybody will have an issue with competing in white job purse for those that it does affect it has a huge impact a huge impact um so it it we need to acknowledge it recognize it and then find out what people need to be able to compete at their best because some of the stories come on back in saying women have they've and I'm talking very well-known women, (laughs) they have had to 
they didn't have spare underwear when they were competing and they got their period they had to go out um with tissue paper and a prayer <laughs> to get around without having their dignity um being being stripped from them as in their words not mine um and it's just time that things like that change and i know tradition can be important and especially in equestrianism we do love tradition and don't get us wrong we are not anti-tradition in any sense of the word but when it comes to our dignity yeah we are (laughs) we will absolutely um put forward what's right and what people need and advocate for those yeah i think that that has been like a really really powerful um campaign because even like i remember at the awards night at the the grassroots rider academy in the speech you made and i was like it, like by the end of it i was like no not in a weird <laughs> way i was like f men fuck them like we should be allowed to do this like you know what i mean like and it was really powerful not that i was like it's like burn your bra stuff it was like we should be allowed Look, to do I, this. I think i think we have to give people the benefit of the doubt and that it's not like we've always said at equitas we are not anti-men we are not mm-hmm. here to you know argue for the sake of arguing but when this campaign came out, that was one of the things that was said to us, you know, you're campaigning for the sake of campaigning. And, and it's, it's disappointing that that is what people genuinely believe. But it's true. That's what they that that's their perception of it. And it's just it, Chris, it comes down to education. It really does. You know what I mean? I think if people learn more about this, and they understand it, you know, and that's what we're doing here at Equitas. Like we're really trying to give people help people to understand why this is important it's not for the sake of it it's not um you know to go on a crusade and to to go on a campaign for the sake of it and and certainly not anti-men certainly not even you know anti-tradition or as i said like the just going against the grain or just to shout you know what i mean this is not Mm. what we're about we're about making things better for people um and educating where we need to we are all in a position where we could do with learning more and understanding more and putting ourselves in other people's shoes and it just that campaign really opened my eyes specifically but I'm sure a lot of people with some of the feedback that we got now all the feedback that we got is is has been confidential like it, it's all anonymous nobody knows who said what but it's just the struggles that people have gone through behind closed doors and the sacrifices that they've made to try and compete in the sport that shouldn't have to be that hard it shouldn't have to be that hard and so many women are are involved in equestrianism for a hobby or for to make to enhance their lives and yet it brings this level of anxiety and level of stress that it just shouldn't be the case and so that's that's the whole idea behind the campaign and whether you agree with it or not there is definitely a place for women and especially for young women to be able to enter this sport free of the worry of of getting their period while wearing white jumpers if that's something that we can take away from them we should do it you know yeah no i agree like i even i'll admit like it was never something ever crossed my mind initially until the irish team the irish rugby team said they were changing to navy and it was only then that i realized it never came i played sports growing up but we actually played i played for a team that colors were like black or navy so I was never wearing white shorts so it was only then I went oh yeah and then as soon as I saw the Equitas one I was like absolutely that that makes huge amount of sense and you even saying that like a bit of tissue paper and a prayer like I'm thinking that like even the top level places like the states of the jacks that you'd have there like it's it's not like it's not great but you know it's how how can how can a woman stay 100% focused if that's what they're dealing with behind the scenes yeah you know and i think in all sports if this is something that helps women to perform at their best then it should be provided they should be provided you know the venue should be make sure that they're fully equipped with sanitary products um there should be sanitary products and first aid kits which there isn't as a standard you know like these are things that seem really really simple and really really basic but they have a huge effect you know, they, they really do. Well, they'll have a huge impact. And I I just think as well for, for the vulnerable, as in the, the young girls entering the sport, and I call them the vulnerable because at that age, they're, you know, 
they're dealing with a lot, um, both physically and mentally. And that is statistically the the time when they will quit sport um, in general. Mm. We see it a lot with the equestrian industry, but in, in a lot of other sports, it's the same. So if we can do something to help encourage them to stay fit and active and part of their teams with their friends and everything, like taking the social aspect into it as well. Um, and then also the mental benefits of working with animals and horses that they should absolutely be given every opportunity to stay in the sport and having to wear a certain color on competition day or a match day or whatever it may be it just seems so archaic in this day and age yeah I understand um it is something that I kind of would always be like I love the tradition stuff but I'm like I'm thinking about that more and I'm like yeah no they like no traditions worth people dropping out or not feeling like they can partake in something they love and you know that like they may keep going but they may stop com- keep competing because they don't feel comfortable there's all these different things that it's affecting people I suppose women of most ages to be honest yeah absolutely it, it does affect it will affect women at all stages of their lives at some point um to what degree that's the the variation but um and how they manage it is also a variation but it is um we have we did a survey as part of the campaign and we do have stats on the amount of women that have refrained from competition purely and simply because of it so i mean if you want to look at the numbers if those women are not competing as often as they should be you know then the the governing bodies are suffering the venues are suffering do you know what I mean the sport in general is suffering so it, it does look we've always said it at equitas equitas is bigger than any one of us individually you know what i mean as a collective is where it holds it holds strength and power um and where voices can get heard so that was the the main part of it but we have as of january 1st um eventing ireland have brought in that they can that riders can now wear dark colored jumpers um and we are ecstatic to see that we are waiting for the other governing bodies like dressage ireland etc to come on board um, and hopefully update their rule books to to say the same so watch the space i suppose but british dressage have been it was british riding clubs brought it in initially and then british dressage of late um as of january 1st have done the same so that's a huge huge step in the right direction um and yeah there are just times when the needs of of riders and athletes today has evolved and traditions have to evolve too and new traditions formed perhaps yeah no absolutely do you find any you're getting more pushback from any particular bodies or you know or is it like is the pushback on trying to change these things more from men or women within the governing bodies um funnily look i think change is difficult for everybody and it's not comfortable like i don't think anyone is really comfortable with change and you feel like you're kind of letting go and you know where will it end i i understand and i get all those arguments um and the majority of of comments albeit you know overwhelmingly positive for the campaign there has been a few as i said that have pushed back and and they've all been from women you know and i think that's what has disappointed me so much and has kind of gotten me onto the do they know what equity means equity is not a bad thing you know what i mean to recognize that you're a woman doesn't it's not a blanket statement um and i mean it's just it goes back to as well and i i did i actually mentioned it on the the night of the rider academy that you know even uniforms are uniform that we wear for equestrianism even you know it's designed for men and then just applied across to women like that's where it has come from going way back generations and centuries um there's few and i i don't know the stats so i don't want to kind of i'm going to be very general when i say this but there's there's very few sports out there that have actually designed their uniforms for women um and that that is changing thankfully you know you've got riders um designing clothing brands for riders which is amazing um, and their needs are being met in a lot of other ways but you know, I just think it has to go further and has to go broader. And I think people need to have the understanding that 
getting equity is not necessarily you know special treatment or a disadvantage it's it's our right yeah absolutely you know you were saying as well earlier bring it back to uh part of why equitas is is, um set up and you were saying how it's 70 percent of the equine industry is women but they all seem to take background roles why do you think that is um I think there's a lot of reasons for it. I think, look, it's a lot of it can be circumstantial as in their availability um, their talents. You know, I think in general, women maybe have that kind of more caring, more attention to detail. And so they fit into, you know, the caretaker roles quite, quite seamlessly, quite naturally, perhaps. Um, and that is a bit of a stereotype and a bit of a generalization, but you know, we're, if we're good at it, we're good at it and, and we'll embrace it. But I think we need recognition for that. We need acknowledgement that the support staff and that the people behind the scenes and the organizing and all, all that, that goes that goes on behind for events and everything. Um, it, it's the foundation and the backbone of the industry. Without them, it wouldn't it wouldn't be what it is. So, um, you know, and it's going into like physios and vets and all that sort of stuff like right there. The majority of them are, are female. So it is... Um, it's it's a little bit mind blowing to to acknowledge that this hasn't been done before and that you know they haven't had their own platform and stuff like that before and the recognition that they deserve but that is is what Equitas one recognizes and then two strives to change. Do you think that's because of the equestrian industry in kind of in general being a bit like technophobe? <laughs> And really only covering the top levels in general, like before, like the grassroots Gazette and Equitas came along, it was very heavily focused on the elite. You don't have ground root, like grassroots ground, ground level people. They're not covered. They don't really care, to be honest. I I think it's not just the equestrian industry that has that problem. You know, I think it's, it's mainstream media. They, they put forward the top 10 percent the elite and that's absolutely fine because if we have to have something and someone to aspire to if we don't see it we can't be it um but that doesn't mean that even as you go down the levels of of elite for example that the same rules apply if you can't see it you can't be it you know what i mean so um to inspire the you know if, if there's a young girl out there that aspires to be a groom that she should see that amazing groom at work, you know what I mean? And and see the recognition that they deserve and, and um appreciation that they deserve. So, you know, it's it's it to break it down in its most simple form, that's probably it. It's to shine a light on the people that are are the backbone of the industry and making it work for the elite. You know what I mean? And it doesn't take we're not here to take away from the elite um, and what they're doing. We absolutely cover, you know, the those riders and those those successes in Equitas as well but it's you know it's to be broader about it and to to give a platform to those that don't feature in mainstream top 10 percent elite level media yeah makes sense just out of interest do you think the fact that women compete against men in the equestrian industry do you think that holds them back Sorry, can you repeat the last bit again? Do you think that holds them back? Holds women back? Mm. Uh, no, I would say it challenges them and drives them forward, absolutely. Um, yeah. We deserve to be there. So mm. it, it, um, um, and the, the great thing about the equine industry is that, yes, while we're competing against each other, we're most often competing against ourselves. You yeah. know, and it's us and our horses against against the performance from last week that we did, not necessarily, you know, um, our competitors. And I think it there's definitely a sense of camaraderie that I, in that I think in general nobody wants to see a fellow rider or horse go poorly or have a bad day. You know what I mean? They just want to do the best that they can. Yeah. No, I didn't. I didn't think it was either. I just uh, was interested in just thinking of saying they were more in the background and stuff like that. I was just interested to kind of see what your view was on it. So let's kind of move on a little bit 
tell us about Envious Dress Hour. So Envious is definitely a kind of a passion project. Myself and a friend, um, she, Nicola, is a personal stylist and qualified style consultant. So she has always had a bit of a flair for fashion. Um, and has always helped me throughout the years and definitely since having the girls um, you know my body has changed my physique has changed I don't know always what suits me what fits me um, and what my style is and like Nicola was always um, right there behind me to offer me advice and clothes to to borrow and and all this sort of stuff and to be honest that's it kind of organically evolved from there you know Um, and we decided to see if it, people would be open to um hiring the dresses and and the business model that that looked like so it has it has evolved even more so from that because um from the so the appointments that Nicola would be undertaking with clients the need and it's just the stark realization that women are suffering with their lack of confidence um and I mean, we see it in the equine industry and it's funny that there's such parallels between the two companies, but, you know, we see it in the equine industry a lot with people lacking confidence um, and it's not just within the industry, it's in their own life and their lifestyle. Um, and it's, it's very interesting to see that. But from there, then it has kind of evolved because of the lack of women's confidence. We've gone into then kind of trying to change their mindset and their 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 education around their own bodies and style and trying to help them find their find their confidence using style and fashion to do it and I mean one of our things is that like style I hear one of the the lovely quotes that Nicola kind of says and sorry I don't mean to say this is a quote because I might butcher it now but it's something along the lines of that your your clothes are often your armor you know what I mean? And, and what you put on helps you kind of feel a little bit protected and, and it does have a huge impact on on your outlook and your confidence and your mindset for the day. And so one of the things that we really advocate for is to use your everyday style to enhance how you're feeling. So, you know, if you're feeling a little bit down the dumps or frumpy and you come out in kind of, yes, comfy clothes, but maybe aren't perhaps you know we have certain clothes that we can wear in house and certain clothes that we won't go outside the house and but you know if you make your everyday wardrobe stylish while being comfortable it definitely perks you up and I mean you hear people say it about I put on makeup to make myself feel better you know it's the same with clothes have the clothes that you pick and choose and wear every day make yourself feel better um and not just and this is where it has moved on from the dress hire side of things is not just for the special occasions it's for the everyday so while we will always accommodate for the dress hire side of things and 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 saving money and time and and the planet by hiring rather than buying your your expensive dresses let us do the hard work for you and we'll provide them um it definitely has transcended into the everyday and the importance that how women see themselves and the effect that that has on their confidence is um yeah it's pretty special to be part of these two brands that kind of really focus on women and women empowerment and um their mindset and their education as well so it's funny you see the two parallels when I talk about them side by side yeah it's interesting because I suppose you don't necessarily associate a clothes clothes uh, dress hire shop with empowering women but it is true like especially what you said about makeup like I have uh, a lot of issues with my skin like and thankfully this is not a <laughs> I'm not going to be using the video here but like you can see it so but I find a lot of the time now if I just put makeup on I feel a lot better if I have to do something and it's just that thing it's just like I don't feel like there's like I just feel better in myself and it may be vain whatever but if it makes you feel good does it matter no and that's it. It comes back to your inner confidence and your your how that impacts you on your day to day. And there's no doubt about it. It impacts your self-esteem, your self-belief, you know what I mean? And then what you can go out and feel like you can conquer in the day. And, you know, not even just to bring it back to the Why Can't We campaign with Equitas, but like if you give someone a dark pair of jobbers and say you don't have to worry about getting your period in those, 
go knock them dead. You know what I mean? Yeah. They'll go out with a different level of fire. Whereas, you know, white job person say, oh, careful now, don't leak. You know what I mean? Or you have to question then, you know, it definitely has an effect on your mindset. So I think what women wear and how they present themselves is so important for themselves and it's their self-esteem but it, it does project as to what you put out there in the world and perhaps how you go about your day-to-day how you feel about your day-to-day and um your your outlook and your your mindset and hopefully it, it you know changes it for the positive yeah uh, one thing I thought was interesting there you were saying as well about the thing saying you know it's good for the planet and it's weird that there hasn't been more like dress hire places before now because it's really, really common for men to do it. You know, hire a suit for a wedding or whatever, whereas women have to get the new outfit each time. But now if you're hiring a dress, it's like because you're eco-conscious, not because it seems logical not to have to buy a new dress for every occasion. <laughs> yeah, like, I mean, we we came from, from the idea of, like, and we had a good bit of inventory ourselves initially, and the these were dresses that we absolutely loved, you know what I mean? And and our thing about the dresses are our style and our our kind of tagline with Envious is is classic, elegant and memorable. We don't pride ourselves on being trendy and getting the latest kind of must have pieces in. That's not what we're about. We're about the dresses that stand the test of time, that make us feel good, you know what I mean? And and you know, forget size size means absolutely nothing it is there's there's no place for size if you know what I mean because you could try on a size 8 you could try on a size 16 you know what I mean in the same day like it's just it depends on the dress it depends on the the style the cut the detail the fabric the structure you know what I mean that's what we're looking at and and the unique thing and this is what I truly believe about envious even though we're inspired by so many other great companies out there that are doing similar but the unique thing about envious is we shop for we call it the envious girl so it's the you know we we picture somebody in our mind and we say what would they like to wear what situation are they in and circumstance are they in in their life that they might want to hire a dress for this occasion and we shop with that person in mind so when that girl walks into our studio we know we have viable options for her to 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 hire to try on to hire and to walk out feeling amazing and the best version of themselves um so you know we always consider that when we're purchasing new pieces who is it going to work on what did they want to wear it to what did how did they want to feel when they're wearing this piece um, and if it doesn't take all the boxes it doesn't it doesn't come into the studio um so our collection is very very carefully curated and all with the envious girl in mind and to try and bring out the their best selves that's just it i love that that is brilliant i actually saw in one of the posts you put up the other day and it made me like really really happy and it goes into all the ethos and everything we're saying but it's like you shouldn't dress on how you want to look you should dress how you want to feel and i was just oh, like yeah. that is so true <laughs> A hundred percent. Like we, so Equitas was, was, um, relatively new last year. I'm going to say, sorry, 2022 when we had the first grassroots Gazette Gala. And I, I think that was in the October. I think I'd had Paige in the January and, um, you know, I still didn't really know. It was probably my first like proper public outing since having her. And I didn't really know what I, what I wanted to wear and how I wanted to feel. And, and I, I said it to Nicola, I was like, would you have any options for me? Um, and she sent over a few pieces and, and I tried them on and I went with a red jumpsuit. And Which is I cool, suppose, I, you know, I didn't, initially I didn't love it on me. I would have mm-hmm. said, I am not a jumpsuit person. Jumpsuits don't suit me. I have a long torso, you know, um, and I put it on and I said, you know what? This actually makes me feel a bit like a boss. You know, I was able to have my hands in my pockets, so I wasn't going to be fidgeting. I felt elegant enough while feeling, um, I suppose, conservative enough. And I was still breastfeeding at the time. So I was like, you know, I've got like my 
boobs are bigger than normal and I'm still carrying a bit of baby weight and I just felt like it hit in all the right places and it's not something I would have picked out for myself but I felt like a boss and it, you know it was kind of yeah. low at the back but it still felt a bit elegant I didn't feel frumpy and you know it's just that was a kind of a game changer for me and how a, a piece could make me feel and yeah. not one that I would have picked out myself one that I would have said was not my style but you know I trusted Nicola I trusted my friend and I said yeah I'm gonna go with it and when I look back on that now and how that outfit made me feel especially on the night um when there was a lot of eyes on me I did win an award that night so there's a lot of eyes kind of on me and I I I didn't necessarily feel under pressure but you know you kind of put yourself under pressure with these things don't you you want to kind of look and feel Mm -hmm. your best and I just I look back on those pictures with absolute fondness of of how that outfit made me feel and it seems a little bit oh superficial to maybe kind of put that level of responsibility onto an item of clothing but it's the truth it's like asking somebody to go to this this event this red carpet event with no makeup on or their hair not done like it just how does that make them feel so it it's just it's an extension of that and I then this year I had three events quite close together so I had I had Brie then in August um, and in October we had the grassroots award night um, and then I had an event for Envious we had a masterclass event for Envious in the beginning of November and then in the beginning of December we had the grassroots writer academy event so I had three events formal events quite close together um still fresh like in the postpartum kind of period and I had no idea I had no idea what to wear um and again those three outfits that I wore would would I have picked them myself I'm not sure like I really am unsure and still there was a purple dress that I that I wore and I look back at it and I'm going I'm not sure I, I even like love that dress for me but it made me feel so glamorous and so special on the night that and the amount of comments that I got like it was just you know Nicola truly has a skill and a talent when it comes to styling what works for people and and how how to bring the best out of them and how to to dress them without losing their style because still like I look back and I'm not going oh my god that that's not me it's just wow I can't believe I wore that and yeah. you know how good did I feel in that and just the empowerment that comes with that like you know it makes you feel a bit badass yeah no that's really cool like it's funny you were saying with the, the red jumpsuit as well because like I didn't know you back then uh really and I actually remember that jumpsuit because I thought it was so cool looking and you looked really cool in it like and like a boss basically so you know <laughs> it makes it like like it, people notice them as well do you know what I mean and if you feel like that obviously you're going to be more confident the way you walk and present yourself which obviously like you know people pick up on and uh yeah like the the those those outfits I've seen the pictures and all and they all look they look really nice you wouldn't realize not that you need to hide it or anything but you wouldn't realize you were very recently like after having a baby in any of those outfits and it's it's it affects how you stand it affects Mm. when you're standing for photographs and and how you pose and how you present yourself and I suppose the latest one with um the writer academy awards night where I was making a speech you know I I wanted that speech to go well I wanted it to be powerful and I wanted to feel um I wanted to feel strong is what I wanted to feel and I wore even though it was a a, a black tie event and typically short dresses are a no-no for black tie um I went against the grain and I wore a short black dress with a big bow on the back um and as I said to Nick I was like I feel like a boss with a bow like I mean it's just the perfect blend and it is I felt really, really good about myself, even though I was only a couple of months postpartum to get up on stage in front of a room full of people and have it go out on episode eight of the Grassroots Rider Academy um, to the masses and and make my speech and, and feel really good about it. And as I said, it kind of seems a little bit superficial to say that clothes can have that impact, but they do. That's the, the fact of the matter. And 
they've had a huge impact on my self-esteem in this period of my life um, where I'm challenging myself with Equitas um, I'm being kind of in getting more into public speaking and, and standing up and presenting myself and the envious has absolutely changed how I feel in that regard I'm, I'm now looking forward to these occasions I'm not shying away from them um, and obviously I have my friend to thank for that and and I always said she is our our USP with envious and um, people can can have dress hire and recreate what we do but they don't have Nicola Ty. <laughs> yeah absolutely she sounds like she just has the eye for everything she's amazing amazing she she is a mom of four boys she has come from the corporate banking world she has worked from home she has even though she is only 40 years of age she has um a lot of experience in different spheres behind her belt and and she's so generous with it um her time and and her what she's learned and She's always been my rock anyway. And now everyone else gets a little glimpse of what I get. And uh, they should be very, very honoured. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That is so cool. So we were talking about you being like postpartum all this. So you are running these two amazing companies. And you're also a mom of two babies. How old are the two of them? Paige is actually two today. And Brie is five months. Yeah. So two under two or just about out of two under two. Um, and look, it has been hectic. I don't think anyone would tell you that it's not. It has been hard work, relentless at times. Um, and juggling it all is is definitely um, a skill that I'm still mastering. I don't think anyone will ever have it mastered. But it is so rewarding. And I mean it just it makes what i'm doing with equitas and envious extra important you know that i'm i'm now mindful of of how i talk to myself how i talk ab about myself you know not to put myself down in front of them to just to be very mindful about what you're putting out there and if i'm i'm going to say kind of healing or um strengthening myself from the inside out with both of these companies and making myself better then that can only lead for you know a better mum to two girls in my opinion what, what kind of tricks do you have for managing all three or have you a like lot of help. little uh, <laughs> A lot of help. Um, I am not alone. Like my husband's amazing. My mum and dad are amazing. My brother and his wife, you know, like even John's family, we're surrounded by a lot of people who are willing to jump in um, and give us a dig out. And it, it's not always easy to accept the help. And only lately have I kind of said to my mum, look, I need, I need some form of kind of structure with the childcare so that I can get certain work done throughout the day. And um, it's amazing that I have that option to be able to juggle these businesses and not everybody is in a position to do that. And I, I really do appreciate the position that I'm in and I don't take it for granted. It is a different type of hard, I suppose, um, compared to somebody who maybe has a baby and has to go back to traditional nine to five work. Um, but I definitely have a lot of help and I do it and, 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 find a way to muddle through i suppose along along with everyone else doing the same thing doing the same juggle but somebody asked me before what would be your your advice for a new mom or whatever and i was like i was like make sure that you can do everything one-handed yeah i was like one of the biggest learnings from me was was i think my husband i, I was after having page and john gave me a cup of tea and the cup that it came in my like two fingers wouldn't fit into the handle of it. You had to hold it with like one finger and I, it kept slipping and I'd burn myself and I, you had to support it on the other side with your other hand. And yeah. I said, John, I, I can't drink from that cup one handed, you know? And, and so he got to the point where he'd come over to me with this cup and I'm like, John, you're going to have to change the cup. And if I felt like such a prima donna, but I was like, I needed to be one handed, you know? I need everything to be one handed. Like even now I'm looking at going... 
for smaller phones that I, I don't have to use my second hand for support if I'm writing a message or whatever. So I'm like, everything has to be one handed. Um, and so, yeah, bear that in mind. If you're if you're giving a gift to some to a new mom, just a one handed gift is amazing. <laughs> that's so funny because that's something people don't think about. You know what I mean? It's something you don't know until you're there, really, isn't it? Normally. That's it. I couldn't believe that. I was like, I can't, I can't drink my cup of tea. It's, I can't hold it with one hand. You know what I mean? Or I can't write this text while I'm feeding because I can't do it with one hand. Um, and it's that can be infuriating when you're sitting there looking at your cup of tea and you can't drink it. Um, so yeah, just find the little things that make your life easier. Um, and don't be afraid to ask for help. I suppose are probably the main things that I've learned. Um, during this during this period and I you know I'm I'm a relatively new mum as I said I'm only pages only two so I'm absolutely still learning and taking all and any advice that comes my way <laughs> but thanks I'll put a suggestion box in the in the podcast thing yeah I love that, <laughs> <laughs> love that. idea swap from all the mummies exactly so when you were saying as well it can be hard to ask for help why did you find that it was hard to ask for help I uh, still find it hard to ask for help. Um, look, I think equestrian women, especially women in general, but definitely equestrian women were so capable and so kind of strong mind and, and um, driven and perhaps stubborn <laughs> to like, it's, it's a tough sport to be in. It's relentless. Um, and so there are certain characteristics that feature, I think, across the board. And with that, for me anyway, it was independence. You know, I was from a very early age, was determined to drive myself to shows, you know, get my licenses, you know, my horse box, my horse truck, um, you know, be able to train my horses that they loaded independently so that I didn't have to go in with them and that I didn't need anybody to come to the shows with me. Um, you know, even loading a bale, all those sort of, sort of things, making it that your yard worked um, with you independently and that was important to me and I suppose that has kind of filtered into the rest of my life where I I shouldn't I feel like I shouldn't have to rely on anybody else um but that's not the case it really isn't and people are so generous with their time and they're only too happy to help if you if you either leave the door open for an offer or um ask them for it so it is um yeah I think it's something that that we do find difficult but at this stage in my life is a necessity. Yeah. How hard has it been to let go of that like part or even slowly break it down? It's been hard. It's been hard, but you know, it's been hard to justify sometimes. Um, but the only thing is, is that I'm, I, I find it easier to justify help when I'm working. So when I'm working on Equitas and I'm working on MVS, I find it a bit easier. Um, self-care hasn't really factored in yet you know time with the horses and time in the saddle hasn't really become a priority in the day-to-day -day stuff yet but it will and the time will come where where I'll, I'll make space for that but you know I'm I'm loving the work behind the scenes with Equitas and Envious and um if if the horses and the in-person and the coaching and stuff like that takes a little bit of a back seat for now I'm still coaching, don't get me wrong, but just not to the same um, hours that I was before um, or even while I was pregnant. So it is, um, the great thing about it is, so it never goes away. You mm -hmm. know, it, it'll always come back. And every time I teach a lesson, I, I'm, I'm buzzed after it. And my clients are amazing and they're very understanding um, and flexible with it, with my needs um, at the moment. And yeah, I probably couldn't ask for better with that regard. So it is um it's it's the adjustment has been has been tricky but as i said even the likes of shane and Murren and equitas and nicola with envious and my clients at home and even mom and dad and everything you know very understanding about what i need and and what i'm going to prioritize right now and and then and obviously then still chatting about where it can go in the future and that keeps it exciting and keeps you kind of wanting to go forward yeah, no, I love that. That's brilliant. And yeah, it's okay to change those things sometimes because you have to, like you can't, circumstances in life change. 
yeah absolutely it just you're you're you cast a wider net um and and things do look different but it it as i said the future excites me with both and three brands you know my own personal coaching brand um with equitas and then envious as well so yeah they all thankfully they're all dovetailing nicely and linked to one another um which inspires me and motivates me even more that's brilliant yeah no i do love that so i think that is pretty much everything i have to ask you except i do have one question that i like to ask everybody at the end of the podcast and that is what is the best advice you've never given i've ever been given yeah Oh, not to be cliche about it, but probably to accept the help, um, which I don't take very well. Like, let's be honest, I don't think anybody does. And I don't think anyone kind of realizes it. But um, yeah, I think, you know, do the best with what you have um, and with what you know. And then when you know better, do better. That kind of that kind of a thing is probably the most the most advice that I would probably offer to people or, or would take on board myself right now because, you know, quick to punish and quick to criticize and quick to judge ourselves. Um, we should be doing this. We, we need to do more. We need this, that and the other and just do the best with what you have and with what you know and then then do better. Um, I think that's probably the what I'm living by day to day at, at the moment. Um, and I'm sure I butchered that quote again, but I think you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I know, I know the one anyway but yeah no that makes I like that as well it's good because you do need to when you learn things you need to and it applies it applies to the horses as well like you know what I mean so like the most advice that I would have kind of offered my clients is just you know every horse is individual their training is individual yes you might have a system and it works absolutely but you know it has to be adapted and has to be open to change and you know, if you have a horse that's going against the grain a little bit, you know, do the best of what you have there and then, and then build on that. So I think it's it's very applicable across the board um, with any aspect of your life. And I think it just, when I say that to myself or when I hear that in my own head, it, it just, it calms me down a little bit and stops me getting overwhelmed and, and letting things kind of get in on me and just says, you're doing what you can, keep going, you're doing a good job. Yeah, that's brilliant. So I think that is, as I said, sorry. So I just want to say thanks again for joining us today, Sarah. Can you let everybody know where they can find you? So you'll be able to find Equitas at Equitas Era on Instagram or equitas.ie is the website. And there's loads of articles there that are all free. Um, once you subscribe, there's um, a huge array of value to be gotten on the website. And feel free to get in touch with anything that you'd like us to cover or anything that you'd like to cover yourself we're always open to new writers and new guests and live streams and podcasts and stuff like that so um the with envious then we are at envious styling and dress hire um, on instagram as well the website is coming soon so um keep an eye out for that and there's loads more to come from both um of our equitas we'll be making an announcement shortly about the event that we're running for International Women's Day and we also have some tech launching soon there's there's a lot of work going on behind the scenes and um, we're in the middle of the hate campaign so you'll see a lot of uh, talk about it um, on websites and social media and stuff like that we have a booklet coming for that at the end of the month and um, then with Envious then we are branching out into Kind of bringing forth more educational digital products um, for people to to help um, inspire them and educate themselves on our ethoses and, and what we feel we can add value to. So there's lots to be gained by following us on Instagram and going and checking out the websites, um, especially the envious one when it comes live. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's that's so much so much different things. Like it's it's so cool. I'm looking forward to seeing a lot of them. And I may know little bits of some of the other stuff that are coming, but <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So if anyone is looking to find me as well, you can find me on Instagram and TikTok. It's at strong in the saddle underscore on TikTok and at strong, sorry, no, at strong in the saddle without the underscore on TikTok and strong in the saddle 
underscore on Instagram because someone got to it first. And my website is www.chrissyhawkins.com. So yeah, just want to say thanks again for joining us there. I love it, Chrissy. Thank you so much for having me. Really appreciate it. I really do appreciate everybody who listens to this podcast. So if you please could help me with the algorithm and leave a review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. And even, you know, if you want to reach out and suggest topics for me, I'd be delighted to hear from you. Drop me a DM on Instagram or TikTok. And thanks again for listening. Thank you.